So here's a three by four matrix, and I just put these numbers in, as you can see, one, two, three, four, and so on. And then Symbol Lab is solving this for us. So I guess for some reason it swaps the third row of the first, so they're interchanged. I think it wants to have the zero that is already there up in that particular place. Of course, it's aiming for to eliminate these three here to be zero, so I'm not sure. Any, in any case, what it's going to do next is it's going to get the f zero right here. In order to do that, it multiplies the first one with negative five and the second one with nine. And then when you add them, you come up with a nice zero right there. However, instead of doing that with the times negative five and the other one times nine, what it does is there's a fraction. So negative five over nine. Technically, I wouldn't do fractions, but oh well, I have limited options here on symbol app. So it multiplies just the first row, I'm trying to highlight that actually, I can't, just the first row, all right, I can't. So it multiplies the first row with negative five ninths and adds that to the second one. So obviously here we get a zero right there. Here we just add zero because it happens to be one, maybe that's why it did, with the swap the rows to begin with. And then of course it becomes complicated because we're gonna have the fraction, these fractions, okay. So I introduced a zero here. Next thing to do is trying to get a zero here. Well, that's going to be easy. Multiply the first one times negative one ninth and add it, and you get a zero there. But of course, you have to do it to each single one here and then add it to each single one here. And that's what you get. All right. Then introduce a zero right here. Well, that looks easy, right? Times negative one third. And as you do that, you get a zero here. And again, you get strange fractions. Technically, what I would do now is I would just multiply the whole thing by 27 to get rid of these fractions. It kind of, yeah, actually, it just does the last one here, the last row. You see that? Times 27, which is going to give us here 20. And here it's going to give us 40. And then we can divide by 20. So 1 and 2. Then it multiplies the second row here by 9. Let's see, actually it doesn't do that, never mind. It multiplies the last one by oof, 27 over 20. Oh, it already did that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here it multiplies the last row by negative 58 over 9, okay, whoa. And in order to get the zero here. And it continues on like that. And then at the last step here, it divides to get the, rid of the 9 and the 6, you divide the middle row by 6 and the top row by 9, and you get a nice solution in row echelon form. That's the Gauss-Jordan method, where you have then the solutions 0, negative 1, and 2. These are typical solutions. Of course, these are x, y, and z. And let's see if we go to the original one. The original one is here. And even if you choose these <laughs> kind of like random numbers there, it actually works out to kind of get a nice integer solution out of it. 